Hi, today I'm going to talk about how I made a series of lighthouse pictures that I then used to create edge-lit acrylic. Hi, welcome to Gray Lightning, my video blog about making things and playing games. And two of my favorite things in life are lighthouses and edge-lit acrylic. And that's really true because my all-time favorite project in seven years of doing this channel is a edge lit acrylic project that has a lighthouse in it. So I'll put the link to that in this one so you can check it out. But that was a very complex project. It had six layers of a, acrylic. I did computer programmed lighting with sunrises and sunsets and northern lights. And, and so it was very elaborate, but a lot of fun. This though is the, an example of how great a simple edge lit project edge lit acrylic project can be. It's a single piece of acrylic. It's got a simple light base uh, that I bought online and it has a, a very simple remote control that does basic LED functions, different colors and different light patterns and stuff. So I have talked in the last couple of episodes about using artificial intelligence, Dolly 3, to generate images suitable for laser cutting. I did it for Christmas and for New Year's, and I put those uh, final SVGs on my GitHub page available for a free download, and I will be doing the same with these lighthouse images that you're gonna see here today. But in those prior episodes, I was trying to keep the images very simple, and that was because of the way I intended to use them. So I'll show you an example of what I mean by simple. This is a simple lighthouse generated using the kind of prompt I used to generate the last two set of, sets of images, Christmas and New Year's. I did it because my, my, the way I was using them is I would cut out the image and then I would glue it to a background, like another piece of wood, or hang it as an ornament as a separate piece of wood. But in both cases, I wanted to keep them simple and a single piece so that they would be easy to work with. And that was the kind of prompt I used to generate this lighthouse here. And this is really nice, but uh, the great thing about edge lit acrylic is that it's more an engraving project than it is a cutting project. The only cutting here is the actual profile of the piece when you cut it out, but everything else is vector engraving. And that means you can let Dolly 3 just go crazy and do what Dolly 3 likes to do. So I'll show you another more complex example. And you know, these don't really show very well on, uh, on camera because it's light and uh, it kind of blurs the lines and makes them look thicker than they really are in reality. In real life, they're, they're you know, very thin engraving like you expect from your engraver. And the detail then really shows up very well in, in person. So I will show you in this episode the session in which I generated these three images. I will show you how to, I took one of them into my drawing program. I use Illustrator, but many other drawing programs can do all the same things. And the main thing is it needs to be doing, able to do an image trace. And that turns it into an SVG, and then you can take the SVG into my case, in my case, Lightburn, to create the actual cut files. So I'll show you that whole process beginning to end here. And like I said, uh, these files will be available for free download on my GitHub page, and the link to that will be in the description of this video. This is part of my session with Dolly 3, and I said, please generate multi-layer vector drawings of a lighthouse on a rocky island with several small buildings. But it really didn't understand the concept of multi-layer. So I'm trying something different. I said, generate a black and white image of an elaborate laser cut lighthouse. And these are really pretty artistic. I used two of these, this one and this one, but the third one's pretty nice as well. There's a lot of things I like about lighthouses, but my favorite part is the lens and a particular type called a Fresnel lens and a first order Fresnel lens. So I tried to say, 
show me lighthouses with Fresnel lenses, and this was its first attempt. Two of these actually have a Fresnel lens in them, but not the interesting kind, which is a first order. So I just tried to see, could it do a first order lens? And it couldn't do one in isolation, so I know it couldn't do it in the top of a lighthouse. So I went back to a stencil style or silhouette style black and white image. That's what I asked for here. But it put this crosshatch in the background and, and that really wasn't helpful at all. So I asked it to remove the crosshatch and it came up with these two images, one of which has two lighthouses on a very small island. So I didn't want that. So I said, get rid of one of the lighthouses. And I've got these two images and the one on the left is one that I used. So I'm gonna move forward with three images, though there are others I could have used. But here is the silhouette style image. Here's one of the elaborate lighthouses where I've already inverted the black and white. Uh, the, here's the second one, and here's how it starts with a black background, but that's not the way I want to process it. So I took it into Photoshop, and all you have to do here is say that you want to do an adjustment and invert it, and it will switch in the, the black and the white. You really want the subject matter to be black for image tracing. Save the inverted image and go into your drawing program. Now here's my illustrator drawing. I have one level dedicated to just the cut line of the outside, and this is 11 and a half by 11 and a half inches. On a separate layer, I'll put in the engravings. So here are the three engravings that I'm going to do, and I'll show you how I created one of those. So I'll add a new layer, and I'm going to place my, in this case, inverted image onto that layer. Now it comes in larger than I want it to, so I have to zoom out and uh, I have to shrink it. You hold down the shift key in Illustrator to keep the aspect ratio, to keep it a perfect square and you make it smaller and you want it to go inside of that cut line that you have on the other layer. All of the layers that are visible when you save this out as an SVG will show up in the final file. So now turn on image trace and you want the uh, advanced settings. You want to say ignore white. That way you only get one copy of the lines. If you don't do this, you'll get two copies of every line. You say preview show me the tracing result, show me the outlines, which is actually what are going to be the engraving lines, and if it looks good, you say expand. The last step is to get the colors right. I want to remove the fill and I want to make the lines blue, which are for my engraver. That's what I've set up as engraving lines, so I'm going to turn those to RGB blue, and I'm going to take the fill out from the shapes and here I have engraving lines and of course the red line from the other layer is a cut line. Here it is imported into Lightburn. The main issue here is to make sure that you get the engraving done first before you do the cutting and you'll see I do two passes. I personally prefer to not use max power and a very slow speed. I'd rather do two passes. I'm using one quarter inch clear acrylic here it is finishing the engraving of the simpler design and starting the first pass. And this is in uh, actual speed. But here's the second pass and you know it's cutting through because you see how it's flashing and how you can actually see the honeycomb shape underneath. That's how you know that it's actually cut all the way through the acrylic. I've left the paper on the back but removed it from the front. It would be very hard to remove the paper from such an intricate engraving. These more elaborate lighthouses took uh, about 14 minutes to engrave and cut on my machine. This particular clip is actually going at three times normal speed. Acrylic dust is actually very dangerous, so I always use a wet paper towel to wipe the piece down while it's still in the machine with the ventilation running to take it away and here's how it looks after it's cleaned up. So that's a lot of contaminant that does not get into my shop. Here's how one of these look on my light bar. You can see that certain colors really show the detail better than others. 
Certain colors also do a better job of getting all the way to the top of the piece. As I said, I'll be posting these three to my GitHub page. Look for the link in the description. If this has been helpful or interesting for you, please give me a like on the video, share the video, and subscribe to my channel.